I'm John Manure from AccuSlice, and I just finished the conversion of my PM30 MV mill to CNC operation. And I showed this in two pre previous videos. The first video doing electronic design, and then the second video doing the conversion to the CNC uh, operation. In addition, I custom built my cabinets, uh, base cabinets with drawers for this system. I also built this custom cabinet to keep the uh, chips contained within the system so nothing gets you know, spread out and dumping on the floor. And now I'm ready to work on my first project. My first project is going to be these simple plates for the mag -G clamps for the AccuSlice system. These plates are used to mount the mag -G clamps to the top plate on the uh, indexing plate on the uh, AccuSlice system. And there's two of these. There's one with uh, straight holes and then another one with uh, tapped holes. So I have my drawing for this project with all the dimensions and tolerances. And I'll be putting this drawing into the uh, uh, Centroid Intercon software. So I'll be showing that in a few minutes. The next thing, I'm kind of a novice to the machining. I've been doing a lot of programming over the years. I've done programming in BASIC and Fortran and the Arduino software programming. Uh, but this is my first time doing the G-code programming. But the Intercon software makes that quite easy. So I'll be showing that uh, shortly. But I went to one of my machinists uh, who actually helped design the AccuSlice system, uh, Tom Coolin, and asked him how I should set this up in the mill to mill these. Because I need to mill the outside corners and also the inside. So it's quite a bit of detail that needs to be done. I like to do as much as I can on the machine and not do a lot of hand work on this. So he told me to make some soft jaws for the uh, for the uh, base for the mill. And those soft jaws, I can mount this piece and then I can do the corners and do the inside. So I can actually mount two of these and do two of these at one time on the, uh, on the mill. So that's what I'll be doing. This demonstrates two finished mag jig plates mounted in the two custom soft jaws on the mill vise. I'm getting ready to do my first job on the new CNC mill, which is making these parts for the AccuSize system. But in order to make these, I need to make some soft jaws for my vise. So I wrote a program here using the Intercom software. I'm using two tools. I'm using a .406 drill and a .590 mill. To start the Intercom software, I just press F5, can. And this is a software program. First of all, selecting my tool, just the tool 10, which is my drill. Doing a rapid move to the position, which I've already set up on the mill. Drilling a hole the whole way through at the two positions, the whole way through. Wrapping over to the second position and repeating it. Then go into my mill, which is going to make my countersunk hole. Wrap it into the position. Drilling it down to the correct depth. Wrapping over to the second position, drilling the hole. So it's a pretty simple program. Just 12 steps. Let me post this. Posting the software creates the G-code. And we'll go ahead and run it on the mill. So the mill's all set up with my first tool. And the one thing I did make, I made this guard. It prevents the chips from flying out of the room. It's one of these mag jig clamps with a bracket for it and a large plastic shield. I can still see through, but it keeps the chips from coming out into the room. The first step is using the 0 .406 inch diameter drill to drill the first hole through the aluminum uh, plate and then moving it over to drill the second hole.
After the drilling operation was complete, I replaced the drill with the uh, flat tip end mill, which is 0.590 inch diameter, and drilled the two remaining countersunk holes into the soft jaws. And there's my first set of soft jaws. Let me just clean up the back. And now I'm ready to start my, my project. One additional thing I forgot to show in the video was on these soft jaws, I did cut a, a dado along both of these. And this is about an eighth of an inch wide, an eighth of an inch deep. And this is cut so that my plates will sit in there and I can use the vice jaws to clamp them in place. Then I can use the, uh, the mill to round off the corners. After they've been uh, milled, this is the resulting jaws. And so you see what's happened here. I've used this area here to cut the corners out, but this area here is still holding the plate you know, tight in the jaws so it, it won't move. So this is one way to do a, a one-step system where I can drill my holes, cut my pocket, round off my edges, and do it just in one setups. The other way to do this would be to, you know, take these, you know, clamp them in the system, drill the holes, cut the pocket, then make another jig which you'd screw these down into, and then you can do the outside. But this way, using this system, I can do two pieces at the same time in one jig. So it's one setup instead of two. So it just saves time. Okay, I've entitled this project the Magnet Top Plate. And in setting this up on the mill, I'll be setting up two of these to run on the system. I've set my system such that my center point will be the center of this pocket on the first piece. And the height of my uh, drill bits and a mill will be the top surface of the plate. So my top surface is the top of this plate and is centered in this cavity. So my first step is to, to load the drill, which is tool number seven. It has a diameter of 0.166 inches. Now I move this over to a position of 0.9055 from the center. My center position is the center of this pocket, so this tapped hole, or actually this drilled hole, is 0.9055 five inches from the center point. This next step I wrap it over to that position and then wrap it down to a half an inch above the part. Step four I actually drill the the hole. Again the hole is using this position of 0 0.9055 inches from the center and I'm drilling down a total depth of 0 0.200 inches. My piece is an eighth of an inch thick, so by drilling down uh, 200 thousandths, I'll be drilling completely through the part. And I set my plunge rate to two inches per minute. The next step, I move the drill over 0 0.9055 in a positive direction to drill the second hole. And again, drilling at the same way as the first hole, drilling down to a total depth of 0 0.20 inches. This next step, repeat, and what that does, it sets the system up to repeat this for the second piece. The second uh, piece will be 2.6 inches to the right of this piece. So what this repeat step does is it increments it over in the X position 2.6 inches and then repeats steps three through five. And that'll give me all four holes drilled in the part. Step seven, I change my tooling to the mill, the second uh, tool I'll be using. This is a quarter inch end mill. I set its position to zero, zero, which is the center of my pocket. Step eight, I wrap it over to a height of one inch above my part. And in step nine, I mill out the pocket. 
This pocket has a length of 1.2 inches and a height of 0.84 inches. A corner radius of 0.135. That's the corner radius of my pocket. I'm drilling a total depth of 0.15 inches. My piece is an eighth of an inch, 0.125, so 0.15 will go completely through the part. Per pass, this is the uh, amount of uh, uh, melting 50 thousandths of an inch at a time. I'm trying not to be too aggressive, trying to be very, very conservative in my, uh, my milling capacity. Uh, my plunge rate, the angle, because I'm doing a ramp thing. I'll be doing a conventional milling for the first part of it, but then the very last part, I'll be milling 20 or 2 thousandths of an inch just on the outside, just to give me a nice smooth surface on my inner surface. Again, step 10 is a repeat. It repeats the same process on the other parts, so that, that'll build a pocket on the second part. Step 11, I just uh, move the cutter, the mill back to, to get ready to cut the outer surfaces. Now what I'm going to be, do gonna be doing on this is I'll be cutting the, the corners but not cutting here. This is going to be held in a vise. The vise is going to hold this piece. And so what I want to be doing is cutting the corners, going around, going around both sides, just to square off this edge to give me the right length and also round off the corners, but not cut this, because this is set already set to the exact dimension I need. <clears throat> so the first step is to set my setter comp. Now I set, I set my drill in the previous step to the center of this hole. So set our comp will be to the right. And then these next series of steps are just steps to, so I'm starting in this top corner of my piece, milling the corner, going around, going down to the corner, stopping, raising the tool bit up, going over to the other side, going down, going around, up, and then jumping back to here and then repeating that process going around. Each time cutting 50 thousandths of an inch deep. And then on the final uh, cutting, I cut two thousandths off to give me a smoother cut for a, final, for a final cut. So these are all the line statements. There's quite a few line statements here because it's not, it's not a simple program to, to do all those pieces. So every you know, every increment is, is a line on here. After that's done, this step 41 is repeat. Repeats that same process of cutting this exterior or other part on the second component. So that's what step 41 does. And then the program is done. Fairly simple program, but you know, I'm learning the software, so I spent a lot of time, you know, tweaking it, trying to get it to cut this piece accurately and get nice smooth edges and uh, you know, kind of reduce the time also that it takes to make this. This takes about uh, 12 minutes to cut this piece. One of the nice things you can do with uh, uh, the intercom is after I get this all programmed, I can actually show the piece. So this is the actual cutting of the piece. And then I can show it in 3D. So this shows, you know, the various steps where I started, you know, in, this, in the first part, cutting these four holes for my screws, and then doing the counter bore in the center. And each of these lines is each time it cut through a different depth in the part. And then cutting the exterior, where these yellow lines are the actual cutter position, you know, above the part, going down, going around the corner, doing the size, and then raising up. The red lines are rapid, which is not cutting. And that goes over to here and repeats the process. And again, doing that three times, giving my correct depth. And then repeating that for the, the second piece. So this is nice. You can actually see your software as you're programming. If you make a mistake, you can see it on the screen so you know exactly how you're cutting. And you can actually see it in the 2D, you know, the top surface with my, again, my four holes and then my corners. 3D is really invaluable for seeing exactly what you're doing and 
improving the process, the cutting each step of the process. So after that's all done, I can post the program. This actually generates the, the G code. And I can actually show you the G code. So this is the actual G code program that was written. It's going to take a lot longer to write manually. This intercom software makes this process really easy. So what I did in what, maybe 40, 41, 42 steps is actually 531 G code program steps. So it's quite a few steps. So let's run this on the mill and we'll see how it looks. And also while it's running, you can see it on the screen exactly what it's doing. So in this first sequence of steps, I inserted the drill into the mill and I proceeded to drill the four holes for the two plates in the aluminum uh, plate. I used a single piece of aluminum uh, about uh, five inches long to make the two plates. After the drilling was complete, I replaced the drill bit with a quarter inch diameter mill and then uh, cut out the two pockets in the center of each of the two plates. And it actually clears out the center of the pocket. It doesn't just do the outside trim, it actually trims out the entire interior of the pocket. Then it increments down to the next depth. Actually, I'm cutting this in three different steps, each step doing 50 thousandths of an inch. So it doesn't overload the, the small um, milling bit. On the third pass, it cuts completely through the plate to give me my opening in the mill. Then it moves the mill out two thousandths of an inch and reverses the direction of rotation to give me a nice smooth inner cut on the uh, mill plate uh, channel. And then it repeats the process for the second opening in the plate. All the video in this section of this uh, presentation is actually uh, shown at two times the actual cutting speed just to reduce the viewing time. For this project I actually cut 200 of these plates and, and during the process I went to the program several times to tweak it, to improve it, to reduce the uh, milling time. And I eventually got my time down to less than 8 minutes to make two pieces. Next we cut the ends of the plates. This gives me the exact length of the plates that I need for this project and also rounds off the corner. It does not take off material uh, so it can still remain held tightly in the jaws of the vise. And each time I'm going down, you know, 50,000 of an inch cutting more depth. So after three passes it'll cut the whole way through. And then as a final step I move the milling cutter in 2,000 of an inch to give me a final nice smooth clearance uh, finish on the outside of each of the plates. Notice the screenshot in the upper right hand corner of this uh, video. Uh, this shows the actual position of the tool as it's cutting. And this is displayed on the PC screen so you know exactly where you're cutting uh, in the process. Again, it's a nice tool to see uh, what you're doing and keep track of what's going on. And this is a final cut, cutting off two thousandths off the outer edge and corners. And 
and that completes the machining of the two mag jig plates. Well, I just finished machining a hundred of these uh, pieces for the AccuSlice system and the results are very good. These came out really nice. Um, finishes are really nice, the surfaces are smooth. I didn't do any deburring because I'll be, I'll be tumbling these so the tumbling will take care of the deburring operation and, and get the surfaces, you know, a better finish. But in conclusion, uh, the software worked great. This uh, Intercon software is fantastic for doing the programming. It makes things very easy and uh, I really uh, had no problem at all using it. It was great. In fact, this, the 3D operation where you can actually see in 3D what it's going to cut, you can catch your mistakes before you actually do any machining. So it is a great piece of software. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, please give us a call or drop us an email. And thank you for watching.